Okay, today we're going to talk about using a resist to stop the paint soaking into the paper. So you've all been given one of these, a wax crayon in your folder. If you draw with it, uh, you have to be fairly confident of your image at this point. So have your photographs or drawings in front of you, something to work from. I'm just going to do a quick drawing here just to demonstrate. And then have your watercolours mixed ready. And you can just go over the top of that and the wax resist will stop the colour from soaking through. So you can really you know, blend your colours um, and you don't have to worry about it getting into the paper. So you can do a drawing of whatever it is, you know, the horse, the people, whatever it is your theme is based on. You just do a drawing and a drawing of the wax and then the wax resist will show through the paint. You get some really nice bold effects with that. Um, I've done another one here with some just some fruits and vegetables where I wanted the light hitting the objects. You can layer them up as well so you can see on the onion skin. I did some directly on the paper and then painted it, but then I also protected some of the browner layers and so I could put the paint over the top of it. Um, another effect is you can see here, uh, when I've painted, I very quickly put water over the top of it and so it... Um, just makes the paint go away and you have this like variations it's not totally protecting the paper but you know before it dries it just makes the paper separate out and you get these lovely blotching you know showing the fluidity and the opacity on it um, you can get quite dramatic pictures so for example if you wanted to keep the picture very white in those areas using the wax and things like that can stop the paint from just going places you don't want it to go um, now also in your folder you would have been given one of these, the gutter. These are often used with silk painting, um, but they can be used on paper too. It's a, a colourless fluid. If you're using it for the first time, you need to take that off and put a hole in there and then just carefully put the lid back on. And then you draw with it. So I've drawn on this bit of paper, you won't be able to see it, but I've drawn an eye. Uh, you need to let it dry off. And then again, it acts as a barrier. So uh, mix your colours up that you want to use in your palette. And then you can just, you know, I've, I've just separated out the areas. And then it will trap it. So I've made a, a little area trapped for where the iris would be of the eye. And so I can play around with those colours in there. And they won't flood out of the particular area because it's trapped in like a pocket. Um, so that can be quite an effective thing to do as well, using the gutter. Um, lastly, uh, you would have been given the masking fluid. Um, so I haven't got any in school because I gave it all to you guys. But the masking fluid, you just, you just paint with it and it dries. I've used it on this fish already. And then when the gutter dries, the um, masking fluid dries, you use your finger and just gently rub it off. In the slides, I've given you a beautiful example of that with the birch trees. So the white of the birch trees is protected. And then you can get a small brush and just add in details afterwards. Remember, when you're adding details, you can use the watercolour pencils, which you've got. So you can draw with them and then add water to make them more like a paint. And finally, if you were in school, I would be using this with you, which is a petite pot. You heat it up and then you draw with the wax. Um, so it's called batik. Um, if anybody really wants to use those, you can. Often people will use inks or watercolours with that. It doesn't have to be just on paper. You can use it on, pa uh, sorry, on material. You can use it on paper too. It's very effective. Um, however, it does give a bolder kind of mark. For your uses at home, like you working from your drawings and images from your photographs, these will be really good to use. Um, and definitely the wax okay the wax crayon um, so a nice thing to do if you are going to use a candle or batik or wax is to let it dry and then crack it so the ink shows through and you get these lovely variations in texture okay so look forward to see what you do this week on the wax resist lesson and don't forget to send in your work thank you